Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine. And you? Good. Good. This is a, uh, a new edition of Escapist Corner. Yeah. In our coffee in our, corner. E exactly. It's <laughs> like our new Escapist Corner in the coffee corner. That could be a, like, I could write a jingle. <laughs> <laughs> for next time. I probably the will. Intro, the intro <laughs> for the next one. <laughs> So today we're kind of, we're shaking things up because Ricard isn't here, um, because I thought that it would be more interesting, not more interesting, I shouldn't say that, interesting from a different perspective, to because you're a coach here, you are a nutrition coach, um, to talk about nutrition with me. Mm -hmm. and. N not maybe specifically just nutrition, but from a holistic place, coaching people, being an ally through somebody's journey mm -hmm. through health. So I'm going to just kind of give you the reins right now <laughs> and let you kind of talk about, you know, what you do. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing here. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, I'm doing like a combination of coaching, so just group classes, but also personal training. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a nutrition coach. Yeah. So both are like really, really important. So if you have a goal in training, nutrition will help you. If you have like a goal in like body composition, you want to gain weight, lose weight, training will help you. So both is really important and I try to yeah, give the most like knowledge and help to people here in the box. Mm -hmm. We were, before we started recording, we were talking about what we we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I thought what was something that I think is worth exploring is um, what you and I, or what we have learned um, about ourselves through being in service for other people, helping people. What have you learned about yourself as not just a coach, but as, as a person with, you know, your own um, successes and struggles and everything that, you know, you, your life. Um, what have you learned through coaching other people? What have you learned about yourself? A million things. Like I would what? Say. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, like coming from like a personal training, like kind of career, like starting in, in a normal gym, where like mostly is more about like having a, like a certain look, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to the gym because you want to look in a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, you want to lose weight or gain muscle. Um, and I was also a bit like into that, like wanted to shape my body and wanted mm -hmm. to look in a, in a certain way after like while feeling like, okay, that's like kind of boring and I'm not like really like getting into my goal and there's mm -hmm. like something missing. So I yeah, figured out and like found out about CrossFit. Um, I think like, first of all, it's like nutrition wise, when you like start um, like coaching nutrition, you think that most people just want to get coached to lose weight. Mm -hmm. um, but actually they, they don't, it's like, more about like all of like of what's going on in their like life and environment so coaching people how to um like yeah find a goal and get to the goal mm -hmm. while living the life having a family and so on um that's just something you can really learn while really like coaching people real mm -hmm. people yeah and of course that helps me um yeah, to get a better person you know, also for myself and yeah. uh, find out what's the best way for people, uh, for like clients I have and people I talk to. Um, hey, God, is not here. Uh, <laughs> he just left. <laughs> helps me to, yeah, get better and like, with my habits yeah. and how I live and yeah. what's like figuring out what's important for me. Yeah. You just said something um, that I wrote down about helping people find a goal and I think it's interesting because something that I know that I struggle with sometimes is is um, and I know yeah we've talked about this before is you know kind of 
sometimes you're you're kind of floundering and you don't really you you want to do something but finding a goal hmm. and so how do you help people find a goal when they're just kind of like I want a goal but it's kind of like you know it's like hmm. trying to pick anything isn't really it isn't really gonna work if it doesn't hmm. mean something to hmm. somebody right yeah. So how do you help people find their goal? I think that's or a goal. Actually, what you just said is like they need to like figure out the why. Yeah. So why do they have a goal? Usually, yeah, they just like come in like not always, right? You have also, uh, also clients who feel like okay, I want to do this, that, in that time. Mm -hmm. But usually, um, yeah, people come in and they're like, okay, I want to lose weight. Right. Okay, but what does that mean? Yeah. And especially, what is uh, like what is the goal? So, how many like kilos you want to lose in what time frame? Mm -hmm. Is that realistic? Yes or no? And then um, after that, you really have to figure out to help people. Why? Why is that important for you? Mm -hmm. Was there a time before you had that weight? How does that feel? Mm -hmm. Do you have like a, a, a jeans you want to fit in again? How does it feel like to just like think about like fitting into that? Yeah. the genes again so I think that's more important to understand why and where is it coming from mm -hmm. as long as they're not really like thinking about and digging that deep it will be that like oh yeah maybe I have a goal but yeah. I don't know where to start when how and then maybe they stop after two weeks because they like really didn't really like connect it right? yeah yeah I mean I think you know I always use the example of like the wedding dress right mm -hmm. and um yeah I mean it's it's it, it's such like a generic kind of example. Um, but you know, so much of what you hear is, oh, I, I wanna, you know, summer in six months, right? Or I'm going on this vacation or I'm getting married in six months. And so it's like, yeah, you attach yourself to something like exterior. But, and I'm sure you have found this as well that, you know, when, when there isn't something exterior and it's more about I want to feel good like this mm -hmm. again. That kind of opens up a whole other side to coaching because that's when I think somebody will really open up and, and explore, like deepen into that why. Hmm. Why did I want to wear this size? Or why, what was it about this size pant that, you know, made you know, gave me this kind of sense of worth, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that's hard. And it's hard I, for me, if I'm being completely honest, sometimes it's really hard um, because as a coach, I can only, you know, go off of my own experience, mm -hmm. right? As a woman, as a person, you know, going through my own struggles and my own successes over my life right and you know this thing of you know the you know your self-worth and what you value go so deep and uh to build that trust with somebody and that's our job to build the trust because if they don't trust us they're not going to open up right <laughs> sure yeah um you know that that is the the beauty of coaching but also probably the hardest part I think it's, uh, yeah, it's all about communication, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why we're not selling programs and right. just like leaving the person like doing a program by mm -hmm. themselves because usually like most of the time it's not working. Oh yes, maybe it's working mm -hmm. for like two or three months and yeah. then they're like falling off because they just lost the goal or they were like not really like thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So you have to be like up to date and like talk to people, talk to people. Right. Especially if you just want to like feel, let's say they just come in and they say they want to get fit again. Mm -hmm. Okay, you like try to like figure out, okay, what is the goal behind and what, what does that mean actually? Mm -hmm. Like be fit can be like everything. Yeah. Um, and then like if they like start training with us, after a while you just sit down and communicate again. And then yeah. they can like, they can reflect and they can say, yes, you know, like feeling strong is like last time in that workout, mm -hmm. I could do a plank for one minute and yeah. I felt like I'm getting better. So yeah. they see improvements and there's like connection you have to keep for, yeah, as long as you're coaching someone or the like best way for even longer. Yeah. Right? So yeah. this connection is really, really important. Yeah. So 
you're not losing track as, as a client. Yeah, you just said something really interesting and I wanna ask you about it because you know a lot of people come in and the f one of the first things they say is I wanna feel fit, mm -hmm. right? And I always think like, do you wanna feel fit? Like I, you know, I, I feel fit right now but is that being fit? Mm -hmm. So what is your kind of, what, what is the difference between feeling fit and being fit? Or feeling strong and being strong? Because obviously it's gonna be different for a man and a woman, mm -hmm. right? Or, um, you know, different ages. But when you hear, I wanna feel strong or feel, feel fit versus being, mm -hmm. I don't know, d does that ever even pop into your mind? I, I always think about that. I mean, I don't really like want to like, think about this like woman and man, so it can be like, can be totally the same. But I think so, I, I have the feeling that like a lot of women, they, they want to feel fit. Mm -hmm. For them, it's not really about like, I want to look that certain way or I want to uh, like see my muscles. Mm -hmm. It's more about like feeling like able to, mm. to move, feeling like feeling mobile. just good, mobile. Yeah. Um, and Maybe for men, it feels a bit more like, yeah, I want to see that I'm strong. Mm, you know? And yeah. I think that's maybe the difference. But actually, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. But still, it's the like question same, is, what same, is, but different. Yeah, what is fit, right? Yeah. So let them train for one year and they still feel like, okay, I could get fitter. Right. So there's let, like no, no ending point. Yeah. So that's why it's important to say, okay, what means fit for you? Five pull-ups. Okay, great. Let's see. In one year, can you do five pull-ups? Perfect. Right. So you reached it. Yeah, but just saying, I want to be fit. Okay, mm -hmm. you can't really like see. Sure, you still see improvements. Yeah, but uh, you can't really connect to that that goal you talked about. Right, right. It's connecting the goal to the. Um, it's this like external factor, as yeah. you said, right? Yeah. With, like fitting into a right. denim is like the same as doing five pull-ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your self expectations as a coach what do you expect from yourself as a coach so i want to be a person people feel like they can go with any problems or questions they have mm -hmm. so that they feel like welcomed and like that i'm just like open for them and their question doesn't matter mm -hmm. what they want to talk about right if it's like training or nutrition or like private um, stuff they struggle with um, I think that's the most, like, first of all, most important. And then I want to give them, like, the best service in, like, like being as personal and, like, specific as possible with yeah. person. Because there's so, like, a million different, like, yeah, of course, me people and body types and struggles and fitness out there. So yeah. I try to get to know everyone as personal as I can to help, like, the, the, like, the most specific mm -hmm. I can. What would you say is the, um, maybe not the biggest challenge, but a challenge that you have as a coach? Hmm. I mean, getting there, maybe, like getting people into like training with you and yeah, it takes a while. Yeah. But it's not really, it's not a, a, a big challenge, but it's just like a, a thing of time. You need to give people time. Mm -hmm. But they also have to give us time. Yeah. That's true. I mean, like, coaching is like, whether you're coaching group classes or whether you're coaching one on one, um, it is such a relationship that needs time to mm -hmm. build, especially something as. You know, I'm gonna say it is, you know, nutrition is like intimate, mm -hmm. right? Um, because you are getting into the lives of people's, you know, habits and and also things that they feel maybe like shame about, right? Because food is, you know, it's so many things, it's cultural, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's um, you need it to, you know, be walking and breathing and, you know, living. Um, but it's it's very much obviously you know it's emotional and there's so much attached to it, so it's you know I 
I had a conversation with somebody recently and, you know, it was like when they said what their biggest struggle was, I could, it was like I could feel it viscerally, like how they were saying it was like, I want to get rid of my blah, 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 you know, and um, there was so much just in their tone of voice, right? And it's kind of like, okay, you know, that's not going to be just like, well, you know, you got to get on your salad, you know, you got to eat more broccoli. It's, it's taking it a step further. And when you build that trust, that line of trust, um, and they can confide in you, that's when I think it's kind of like hitting like a, mm -hmm. the, the magic spot or the sweet spot or whatever you want to call it. Um, because I think that, you know, it, it can be really hard if there's not trust built over time. Mm -hmm. And it takes a while. Yeah, and that's, it, that's the struggle. Yeah. Because like, we're like in this like fast, really, really fast environment. We have so much like social media is like bombing with like do this, do that. Uh, I have that program. Yeah. And also a lot of like, like older like diets you did, mm -hmm. you feel like, okay, why should I like open up to a person when I can just do my like 30, 30 days of eating 1000 calories, right? Right, right? So people needs to be able and ready and open to mm -hmm. open up. Yeah. And then you can help. And that will be at the end, the way we can help the people the most. Yeah. Like opening up, talking, communicating, will help them much more than doing a program of 30 minutes. Yeah. So. I mean, I think, you know, like meal plans, this is not going to help people down the road. I mean, unless it's for like a medical condition, mm -hmm. you know, when they need to be on a certain diet, right? But, um, but for like longevity and creating a healthy relationship with food that's going to sustain your life mm -hmm. that you can then teach your family and incorporate in your in your lifestyle realistically um then you then i i feel like then like we've succeeded as as a coach mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah so i think that the best sentence you can hear at the end of a coaching period is like okay i I feel like all the things we did is something I can, yeah, I can do forever. Mm -hmm. So it's not a struggle of keeping, yeah, keeping up. Yeah. Right? So there's still something they feel like I can't do that, or it's really hard for me, mm -hmm. difficult. Then maybe it's not the right way to do it. Right. right? So yeah. they just come and like at the end they feel like yes, that's something I can do. Yeah. It's not feeling like a diet. Yeah. I can live my life. Yeah. That's what we want. And also, as for us as coaches, you know, it's like when we hear that, you know, if they're saying, you know, I'm really struggling with this, okay, let's change it. Mm -hmm. Or let's figure out why you're having a difficult time with it. You know, let's look at this. Maybe we can adapt it. Maybe we can alter aspects of it. Um, but I think for us, we have to be so, you know, very, you know, open and um, adaptable as well, right? Because what works for one person does not necessarily work for somebody else. Um, and yeah, I think that it's, it's, for me at least, coaching is going to be, you know, always, I mean, I mean, you never stop learning, right? And I mean, you can read every single coaching book out there and mindset book and and there's so many but really at the end of the day it's listening and communicating mm -hmm. hearing and seeing people where meeting them where they're at and going from there right yeah. and also i think kind of where i started at the beginning of this conversation is you know we are people too, you know, we have, a, th there is a reason, and I've always believed this, there is a reason why we both got into coaching for very different reasons. But, and I remember learning about this in PN and it, it, it just stuck with me. It's that, you know, we have our own issues with food and eating and relationships with, with that. And there's a reason why we're interested in it. Mm. And if we can't use that, we can't use our own life, 
um, then I think we're kind of doing ourselves a disservice as 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 coaches mm -hmm. and being in service of other people. So, yeah. 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 Is there anything else you want to talk about? Oh, that was nice. This is fun. Yeah. Hey. yeah. We'll do that more often. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to do it next week. Here. This is the perfect <laughs> corner. Maybe we'll just. You need just, to like, like, switch it up a bit next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> next time we're not going to have this. Maybe we'll, like, I don't know. Well, maybe we could. <laughs> you no, know, it's like rustic looking. And we want to have your, like, intro jingle. Yep. I'm going to write a jingle. I don't <laughs> play a musical instrument, but I can, like, sing a song. <laughs> Wedding for <me>. Yeah. <laughs> Actually looks really cute.